Good to see you. We want to welcome everybody today. Yes, we want to welcome you all to um, Scratch Base. Um, my name is Donna Conwell. And I'm Kelly Seacat, and we're your hosts for Scratch Base. And Scratch Base is a virtual forum hosted by the Lucas Artist Residency Program at Montalvo Art Center, which is located in Saratoga, California, on the ancestral lands of the Ohlone people. And with Scratch Base, we are bringing together visual artists, scholars, composers, activists, writers, and others to explore what kinds of radical imaginaries can unfold in this moment of pandemic, racial reckoning, economic uncertainty, civil unrest, and environmental crisis. We're interested in how we think about what is possible, how we can imagine, use our imaginations to build a better presence and future and how we retool and create better and more equitable models for living and working together. So tell us, Donna, about our guests today. Well, I'm delighted to introduce our guest this week. Um, we're joined by Edra Soto, a Chicago-based interdisciplinary artist, educator, curator, and also co-director of the outdoor project space, The Franklin. Mm -hmm. And Susanna V. Temkin, who is the curator at El Museo del Barrio in New York City, and one of the co-curators of Estamos Bien, La Triennale, the museum's first national scale survey of Latinx art. So we're going to be talking about this new exhibition that opens to the public in March, and Edra's work graft that will be presented in the show. I'm excited about this conversation. It's a treat to have you with us, Edra, making time, both of you, in your busy schedules. I'm gonna ask everybody to just watch the chat for the full links to our artist bios and Sudavan's bio as well, and, and other accompanying links for the program. Nathan Zanon, I want to thank, who's our producer behind the scenes, and Mary, who'll be providing live captioning for this event. Um, if you want to access the closed captioning, please press the button at the bottom of your screen. <clears throat> I'll disappear now and leave Donna, Edra, and Susanna to talk for about 45 minutes, and then I'll return to deliver any questions from our participants or from our Facebook stream to the group. I want to thank you all. Donna, thank you. I'll see you soon. Thank you, Kelly. We'll see you soon. And um, welcome, Edra, and welcome, Susanna. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We're really excited to speak with you. So thank you for making the time. <laughs> um, I think I'd love like to start by asking Susanna to introduce, give us like an introduction to the triennial, which opens this March. And I'm especially intrigued by the title, Estamos Bien, um, which translates as like, we're fine or we're good. Uh, which was also a, a 2018 song by Puerto Rican Latin trap artist Bad Bunny that became a kind of anthem of sorts. So I'd love for you to sort of tell us a bit about what, what you were hoping to convey or get people thinking about with that title. Yeah, thank you, Donna, and thank you to Kelly and to Montalvo and the Lucas Art Center and to Edra for inviting me to join her today for the conversation. Um, so La Triennale, it is sort of the revival of a really much beloved exhibition series that El Museo held from 1999 to 2013. Um, and in that original version, which was called the S files or the selected files, El Museo was um, really showcasing young Latino and Latin American artists uh, for the first time in sort of a contemporary biennial format. Uh, but at the time, the show was just limited to really the New York metropolitan area. So the last version of the S Files was held in 2013. Uh, and we, um, there's a relatively new curatorial team of myself, Rodrigo Mora, who's the chief curator here. And um, for La Triennale, we're joined by Elia Alba, who is an S Files alum. And we just felt that it was really time to expand the conversation um, beyond just New York uh, and to really include Latinx voices working across the country and in Puerto Rico. Um, so interestingly enough, our first uh, studio visit when we were all allowed to travel was to Chicago. 
Um, and we met with Edra there for the first time. I think little did you know that we were even starting to think about this um, project. Uh, but we also met with Candida Alvarez, who's another Chicago area artist in the exhibition. Um, and it was really a painting that we saw at her studio that will be in the show that was called Estoy Bien, oh. where we started thinking about that phrase. Uh, oh. We were really, frankly, kind of struggling with what to call the show, which has 42 artists in it, artists who work in so many different media who are addressing different issues and how, how to unite them because really part of our focus on working on Latinx artists is to really emphasize um, the intersectionality of what it means to be Latinx from mm. a variety of perspectives. Mm. So we started thinking about estoy bien, we started thinking about pluralizing that into the estamos bien. Mm. Honestly, we had forgotten, not forgotten about the Bad Bunny song oh. because we all love it, but it was, you know, a happy coincidence. Yeah. Um, and that was the title we were going with um, early 2020. Mm. And then, of course, starting in March, you know, when the world changed, we did revisit the title and we started thinking about um, like, estamos bien? Like, mm. not really. Uh, but at the same time, we we ended up deciding to really stick to that show because even Candida's explanation of why estoy bien, um, for her, it was a response to the ravages of Hurricane Maria and other mm -hmm. um, personal tragedies that she was dealing with at the time. And I think a lot of us, you know, we ask each other, how are you? And we just say that we're fine, even when we're not. Uh, yeah. So we wanted to sort of play with the nuances of that phrase and... Um, you know, it's not just that we're resilient, but it's also that I think we're resilient on our own in a way it's like a, like a middle finger, like estamos bien, you know, like don't worry about us. Yeah. So there's all kinds of interpretations, but I'm, I'm so glad that you titled this talk estamos bien in the lower case as well. Yeah, well, it kind of felt a little bit like a question, like you said as well, like just to kind of check in <laughs> with ourselves and yeah. And, and it's, yeah, so it's such a great title because it just brings up so many interesting connections around ideas around resilience. And in this particular moment of the pandemic, that will just take some even more resonance. Yes. So. And I like that you added the question. I know um, as we were preparing for today's conversation, mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention this funny antidote. When we yeah. were working with our designer and we told her um, the title of the show, she kept putting a question mark at the end because she was like, we're not, we're not good. Um, yeah. So, so you caught on to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny. <laughs> um, that's great. I, you know, I also wanted to ask you, um, you know, this is like the first national large, large scale survey of Latinx contemporary art in, in the history of um, a museum. And in 2019, there was a lot of conversation and debate about the mission of our museum. And um, I was wondering if you see this exhibition kind of in dialogue with or response to some of these anxieties and concerns that some were expressing in 2019 around the role of the museum and who's its community and who's it, who's it representing. Yeah, I mean, I do think that it's in dialogue with that, um, with that debate, but mm -hmm. I want to emphasize that Again, this show was something that is actually drawn out of El Museo's history. Yeah. Um, and something that we really want to think about with this exhibition is that um, with the exception of Candida, who has like a sort of special status with El Museo, which she mm. worked at in the 70s, all of the artists that are in the show are presenting at El Museo for the first time. Mm, so we really exciting. feel like by bringing in artists like Edra, you know, we're building the next generation of what we think are, you know, the really exciting, I mean, not only cutting edge Latinx artists, but the cutting edge artists, period, working mm. in the United States. Mm. Um, so for us, it's really important to start thinking about, it's our community of artists as well. Artists are so central to El Museo's mission from the very start. They actually mm. were part of the founding of the institution. So it certainly speaks to um, some of those challenges that we were experiencing, but I think it also speaks to the ongoing work that um, the staff and the curators and the community at El Museo have really always been doing. So mm -hmm. that's, that's great. And, and what ways did, you know, the, the onset of the pandemic 
reshape your thinking around the triangle? I mean, it had an impact on the timeline, I'm, I'm imagining, and how you were able to roll out, roll out the presentation of, of the exhibition. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, again, when we started thinking about Estamos Bien, and already it was shaky at the beginning of 2020, because we were originally thinking about the show opening in October, right before the presidential election that we were all um, you know, very anxious about for obvious reasons. Uh, it was also the census last year that we were thinking about, um, looking to the future and looking how the census is reflecting the changing demographics of the United States. So, you know, when we realized October was not a possibility, in all truthfulness, we assumed that certainly by March, <laughs> everything would be back to normal, which is not necessarily the case. Um, but I'm happy to say that we are opening with an in-person show. So if you're in the New York City area, um, you can sign up to come visit with limited capacity. And also in the meantime, since we sort of extended the opening date, we wound up extending La Triennale into a year-long exhibition program. So mm -hmm. since last July, we've been rolling out a series of online um, exhibition or special commissions with um, five artists working across the country. And that's all available on El Museo's website. Thank you for um, posting that link. I hope you all visit. They're really great um, shows. And, you know, it's changing some some projects that we thought might be performances that are now um, performances, but in a different way. So one of the online projects is actually documentation of a performance by the Puerto Rican duo Poncili Creacion that we thought would be in person, but they ended up creating this really amazing video that I encourage you all to take a look at. That's amazing. And I know you had a project um, specifically about the census, um, who designs your race, is that correct? Yes. That was part of the, those online initiatives and that was a very interesting and compelling project for this time. Yeah, I mean, we wanted the online projects to not simply be um, moving the show onto the digital space, but to really think about what does it mean by being online. So for the project you mentioned by Collective Magpie, it was a participatory project. Um, Lusania Cruz also created a really interesting participatory project that interrogates um, what is the American dream, which mm. is um, a quite poignant subject uh, in 2020, 2021. Yeah. So, so yeah. Amazing. Well, I'm, I really hope that I can figure out how to come and visit the exhibition. <laughs> um, so I'd love to turn now to you, Edra, um, and talk a little bit about your work graph that you're going to be presenting in the triennial. Um, and this is an ongoing project that you started in 2013, I believe. Um, so before we talk about the actual installation at El Museo and, um, you know, have Susanna also talk about the this, this space where it will be presented. I'd love for us to look at some earlier work and see how this, how graft has evolved over time. And um, with that in mind, I just wanted to share a PowerPoint, if you can just bear with me while I get this going. Um, here we go. Right, so here we've got the, mm -hmm. the logo from the, the triennial. And um, let me just move to the next slide. Okay, so this, I think this is the first iteration of Graf from 2013 um, in Oak Park in Chicago. Uh, this is such an amazing work and it's so interesting to me because I visited, I visited Oak Park and I visited all of the, um, you know, several years ago, I visited a, a lot of the Frank Lloyd Wright homes that are in that area and his studio. Um, and can you tell us sort of about this, this work, this space, you know, what your kind of thinking was um, when you created this piece. Yes, thank you so much for, for everything. Uh, well, uh, this, this is the first iteration of Graft and it, uh, this is the house of a, a, an artist. Uh, her name is Sabina Ott and she, she passed uh, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was doing this project uh, called The Rain, um, which uh, gives artists uh the the facade of of her house uh as as, as a, the space to transform uh and uh consider so um yes and um can you tell us about the um the motif that you're using here i think we have one an image also of you inside 
this, this space? Yes, so this um, decorative pattern uh, that I use, and like this one, are sourced from the common houses in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. specifically the uh, lower and middle class homes that are in, in urban and, and most, most in the ur urban uh, areas. Mm. And um, I, I grew up in a neighborhood that uh, was built during the 50s that, uh, that have a lot of houses with these particular decorative motifs. And um, it, these motifs are, um, you know, there's a wide range of them. Mm. Uh, and I, uh, I think about the you know, the appropriation of the motifs that have occurred, uh, you know, in, in contemporary art and in, in, in the world in general, like there's, uh, these motifs are in, in, introduced in so many different kinds of um, formats. Um, but I think about, I, I, I start thinking about where they come from, because I, I didn't know, and growing up in Puerto Rico, this is, actually an example of a uh, reja, which is a raw item fence that uh, original from the house where I grew up. And I, you know, I see the motifs utilized by artists as well, uh, but there's, uh, I never uh, see uh, like um, beyond, beyond the usage of, of it as, as an aesthetic expression and I, I was interested in the in the significance of it. Mm -hmm. The I think the exhibition uh, or the proposal to activate the facade of the house at terrain motivated me to think about uh, what can I possibly place there. And it was during a visit uh, to to my mother in Puerto Rico that I I, I was with my husband um, during that. Uh, that visit and, uh, and we were walking around the neighborhood and I saw the model that is the particular design that is represented on the house in Oak Park in, in the house in Puerto Rico. And I thought to myself, wow, it, it will be, what, what if I think about it in terms of a, a, an imaginary project where I transplant this fence into into that house in Oak Park. And that was so the beginning of graft very much. Uh, and the, the, uh, the content of like the significance of the fence came soon after because of, of my personal need to, to, to know what I'm, <laughs> what I'm working with. Like I couldn't engage with these patterns and the, these decorative patterns without knowing anything about them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when I was a high school teacher, I uh, one that was I, I was a high school teacher for the Chicago public schools and the charter schools, and I did this. Uh, it was my my work for ten years before I, you know, I I quit and decided to. Um, I, I had the opportunity to move into into more a, de a dedicated career as an artist, which is I never abandoned, but uh, it, I couldn't make a, I couldn't make a living. Mm. <laughs> so it was a it was a, a way of making a living, but also it you know I think I I found my call um, as a high school teacher and education, and I always think about art in terms of education. Um, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you kind of, and we we'll are seeing an image here of another example of that. Uh, this isn't the, the rejas, but this is the... This is a quebrasol, which is the yeah. uh, decorative concrete block, which is a, another um, another motif that is, mm. is it really prevails throughout the island. Mm. Um, and, th and this is a kind of vernacular architecture that doesn't really get very much attention, right? It's And, and its origins are not very well and understood it's part of a visual Puerto Rican visual culture but it's not it's its origins aren't really clear and so that's yeah that's correct so um I mentioned that I was a high school teacher because mm -hmm. during that time 
I was teaching uh, students about African art and I started thinking about the intricate relationship in between the, those, uh, the decorative patterns of uh, the African textiles and the, and the patterns of uh, the, the Puerto Rican rejas and quebrasoles. Mm -hmm. So I did a, a research and I found, um, which is, you know, like the, the, the initial research that I did about rejas, I found this monograph by uh, Jorge Ortiz Colom, which is a, he's a Puerto Rican architect and he, cre he wrote a, a monograph titled The African Influence in the Design Build uh, edification of Puerto Rico. Mm. And in, in this monograph, he's, he's explained uh, uh, the, the, Criolla the Criollo architecture and that incorporates this, these motifs, the quebrasoles and the rejas that he, uh, he declares in, in his monograph they originated from sub saharan Africa. Mm. And uh, they were brought to Puerto Rico as uh, during the time the uh, slaves were working in the plantation during the mm. rise of colonization. Mm. Um, so I, the, you know, this sort of I felt like I was guessing. <laughs> it was a guessing game. Do that. Am I right? This this these are uh, African influence, and this is his uh, hypothesis, his uh, monograph. But it, it feels. It feels like there's um, there's a lot there's a lot to reflect on on this uh, monograph. So I uh, it was an inspiration to me to uh, decide. I, I think uh, this is something to pursue. I um, as a you know some somebody that grew up in I grew up in Puerto Rico in middle class with uh, you know a sort of. Um, and limited resources at the time, and uh, so I didn't grow up in a in a in a world surrounded by <laughs> by intellects or books. And I, I I actually watch a lot of television. I learn English through watching Sesame Street, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> so I think a lot of the common experience of middle class for we cannot <laughs> do in the eighties, I guess, um, and. Um, uh, it was, I mean, the, the experience of being an artist motivated me to um, educate myself and seek for um, how how do, how do I in this particular for this particular project how do I partner with others that um, that can inform uh, more broadly the project? So I I open up. Um, I created a literary component for for graft that um, yeah in in this particular images you can you can see that I created these representations of bus stops uh, or or bus shelters to uh, to create a, a, a prompt for the for the visitors for them to have a place to to rest and and read the the newspaper that at the beginning it, it was a publication of a newspaper and then i have I've, i have produced it in different forms like mm. photocopies or jpegs and anything and really you have it on your website too don't you you have the yeah there's a there's a page yeah. on my website that is mm. uh, a pdf um uh, PDF page. Yeah, we that have a link to that in the chat. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. that contains so many fantastic articles of people that you've invited or texts that exist to kind of be in to, in dialogue with the work and share this this unknown these unknown histories and stories about these designs, which is so interesting. Yeah, everybody contributed in in their own way. I I really don't dictate. Uh, their voice. I'm I'm interested in their uh, this their expertise and mm. how they uh, interject through information. It is very much uh, up up to them. I I I, I invite uh, the contributors 
So it's, it's, it's my curation, my selection of the people that have contributed in, in this project so far, mm -hmm. uh, except like few people that have written, uh, there's a couple of poets that uh, uh, saw my exhibition and they wrote and they either wrote to me or an institution wrote to me telling me oh, this poet wrote about your project. And I'm like, wow, this is really beautiful. So uh, I, I have some poetry contributions as well. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, there's some fantastic text in there. Um, you had mentioned about the visual reference in the, the show, the, the installation shot that we saw there of the, the bus shelters. And uh, these are some examples of those uh, in, in Puerto Rico. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Yeah. These are all sourced by me. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I have limited the, so far, I, all, all the sources to, to the sources that I, that I find. Um, I, I travel many, many, many times. I feel like I'm in between Chicago and Puerto Rico. I definitely live in Chicago and have my home here with my family, but uh, my, my mother and my brother are in Puerto Rico and my, fa my, my family from Puerto Rico. So I, uh, because my mother is elderly, I, no I now visit more than ever. Mm. So I mm. think I go once a month. <laughs> At this point, That's I great. just, uh, but I've been, I think I've been doing that for, for two years now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just personal information, but I, I, yeah, my, my relationship with Puerto Rico have intensified since um, um, my parents have got older and then my father passed him. And then also like sort of a reconnection to communities from Puerto Rico I get with the Museum of Contemporary Art and such that I, I'm currently exhibiting with and have been working with through the, their uh, education department. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And I, I, I'm seeking for more. I feel like this is such a, 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 a project that is so important to me and it's, it's been a slow process of um in, engaging uh, people not all, not only artists which is what i'm my new sort of iterations will be engaging uh, new artists to contribute to the um the viewfinders that are um embedded in the in the franklin representation that uh sorry in the graph representations yeah. Uh, and, and we'll get to that. I have, I have some images of, of the viewfinders that we can share yes. with <laughs> <laughs> Um But before we get to that, can I ask you about um, what, was your, what was your thinking around the, the title, Graft? Yes, uh, well, uh, I very simple. I was thinking of my condition uh, of, of migration, like cons constantly um, moving back and forth and mm -hmm. And also my position, my place, how, how I carve my place. Uh, there's this, you know, like when you, I mean, growing up 27 years in Puerto Rico before moving anywhere else, uh, really sort of um, de defines how I feel. Uh, like I, 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 my identity is very much uh, Caribbean island uh, life, uh, and and that is very different from the American life that I learned uh, mm -hmm. to live when I when I moved to Chicago. So I, I think about that contrast, and 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 also like the um, influences because uh, I I really much I very much. Um, appreciate a lot of things about the American culture that, uh, you know, like cult culture, like music and uh, art that I have, um, that's filtered in, in Puerto Rico through through media, through radio and television. Yeah, well, it definitely graph kind of conjures up these ideas, like horticultural references and definitely like the mi migration experience. But I was also interested in, um, this work that you were kind of doing in parallel 
uh, manual graft. Oh, okay. I don't know because I don't know if this means this, in British English, which is where I'm from, the UK. Graft means labor, hard labor, and um, and this was an iteration of this where you began in certain instances to invite other people to kind of come in with you and create these installations together as a kind of performance. Yeah, graft graft have many meanings, and that's a I, and that's a, that's such a powerful word. I I I I stick to it. I've. Uh, yeah, I thought this is this is it. I I it really did my homework to find what will be the best title for this project, and mm -hmm. I was really interested in the uh, definition of a skin uh, transplant, uh, which is incredible because I I'm talking you know I'm using architecture, which sometimes architecture is sort of associated with something. Uh, you know, like uh, cold and uh, not like far off from from the physical, the body, uh, mm -hmm. but but it inhabits the body. And so, but uh, but I was thinking about uh, the the uh, the quebrasoles and the fences as as you know, uh, it could be a metaphor for for my personal skin and how I incorporate myself into these spaces like uh, phys uh, physically and, and try to connect with them through architecture, which I'm, I'm not an architect. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was fine, you know, like when well, you're not an artist, you can really do, <laughs> you can do whatever you want, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And what did it mean to like bring others into, the, into your process in this way? I'm sorry? What did it mean to bring other, you know, other participants into the process of making the work? Yeah, for me, bringing others is is my objective. I mm -hmm. I I create work that uh, either others in the in the case of manual graft mm -hmm. uh, is a representation uh, that is made uh, in a group effort. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have we have done this at several I done at several occasions and it's really wonderful because it's it's sort of everybody have one one particular mission to complete these tasks mm -hmm. these different tasks of and it it also uh, it, it gave me uh, uh, an opportunity to explore ideas of demystifying the the labor of the artists. Mm -hmm. And so I gave, like, the manual graft arrives in, in uh, sort of like a, in, as a group of, um, uh, of guests, right? People that I have either worked with or people that work for the, or the institutions that are holding the, the project or, or the exhibition. And I ask them uh, to, to meet with me and we talk about uh, a graft and uh, uh, I, I teach them how to uh, create the, the patterns using drafting materials mm -hmm. and we have everything on view um, and so what you're seeing here is uh, the sort of like that it was during the process of of uh, fabric um, creating the, the patterns in on the windows um, we did a really fantastic, um, it was a, a very satisfying experience for me um, to do manual graft at the Arts Club of Chicago. It was the celebration of their 100th anniversary. I don't think, I don't think there's a picture here of that, but um, they had a, they lent me a scissor lift because <laughs> mm. <laughs> it was a 14 foot wall and I had, uh, you know, like five or six um, uh, assistants uh, that, that worked with me and it was really amazing. Like people were confused. What is, what is happening? <laughs> and, and <laughs> which, what, was, <laughs> which was my objective too. It's like, yeah, <laughs> well, you are going to see the whole thing happening right in front of you. It will come into being in front of you. So what we're look, these are kind of, are these vinyl kind of decals that are arranged on the... No, in the, the manual graft I've been yeah. using this particular metallic tape. 
metallic uh, tape. Okay. Adhesive. Yeah, I have one right here. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> and and then and you're kind of inspired again by these these similar patterns from the the rejas. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, very like, uh, very simple geometric pattern. They're actually, as they're super intricate and they seem very simple, but completely confusing. Like yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, I can imagine it was hard to put that together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you get in there, you're like, oh, wow, I thought it was more simple than what it like, what it seems like, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I, I found a material, I've been using so many different kinds of materials for this project as well. But for manual graft, uh, when it when it arrives like that, just like hand cutting uh, mm -hmm. and taping, it's like a, a material that very malleable, very, is a very good material. So it, uh, I have to sort of uh, explore what, you know, what would be the best, more compatible materials. So talking about uh, materials, um, you know, you mentioned earlier about the viewfinders, because that was another kind of element that came into the work a bit later. I, was this the first time in 2019? Yes, you yes. That? Can you tell, tell, talk us through, you know, what we're looking at here? Yeah, for, that is a photo photograph of a visitor that is she uh, this is actually an artist a photographer from chicago that took this picture mm -hmm. uh, of the viewfinder uh when she you know when she was viewing viewing graft uh so it, she's looking through the uh, uh i guess through this the the piercing and and focus on the picture that is on the viewfinder and yeah this was the first time i did this project it, this was at the chicago cultural center and um, also the first time that I, i'm kind of confronted with a, a white cube like a, a space that is very conventional it there uh there's actually in the gallery where it it occurred the that is on your on your promo uh the promo picture. Um, there was, there's few windows in that gallery, but all the windows were uh, covered with walls. And mm. um, it left me just thinking, uh, I think uh, I want I want to, I need to activate uh, this fence. So it's not only the, ex the aesthetic experience, but I, I I want something more. And I actually, I tested this, I tested this um, project um, at a art, art fair, uh, uh, it's called Untitled with Luis mm -hmm. Jesus. We did, a, we did something similar. And mm -hmm. uh, you, you could see, you could see the front and back of the, of the, um, of the fence. And people can see the viewfinders, and I did it on purpose because at an art fair, it's a very different experience. You see, I have to consider every single space, mm. how people behave in the space, how mm -hmm. they move in the space. Right. So that's very that's I I I, I mean, I, I settled on this project because it, there's so much to explore, and then the experience how how is going to arrive to the viewers is also like a really fun problem to solve that also that is also a motivation to me mm. solve and make it as pleasant as possible the, but this was com completely uh to me like the most satisfying one because um the chicago cultural center have um like at the time you know before covid it was um place where like thousands and thousands of visitors pass through and if they see something they can stop you know even if it's like on their way to somewhere else they can stop by and see the exhibitions and uh, I kept getting images of what people see in the viewfinders uh, in social media so and it we didn't have any instructions share it in your social media it was it was a very spontaneous act and it was truly like I felt like well I, I thought about it but I'm glad it, it it really connected because it's always my goal to to create something that 
uh, connects, you know. With yeah. And I think we have an example of that in the, the social media that we can yeah. see here. Um, and, you know, just so the images inside the viewfinders, the they're images that you, you took um, in Puerto Rico, they're domestic scenes, they're scenes of architecture. Some of them are scenes from the aftermath of um, Hurricane Maria. And yeah. so we're, and then you can also, as the viewer, you can also see yourself, right, reflected. Back. Yes, yes. That was a, a, a actually a, a form of solving the uh, installation of the viewfinder. So, it, um, and uh, yeah, I I thought immediately, yeah, a, a, a mirror is something that kind of reflects what also disappears in a space, mm -hmm. and it allows for integration of this of this element. And I'm a very uh, somewhat obsessive phot <laughs> photographer. I'm not a, 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 a technical photographer, but I, I love taking pictures of everything. And I, for many years, I, I in definitely inherited that from my father. Um, and I have so many pictures of uh, and documentation for this project and this was a great opportunity to integrate it all. Um, I also, sorry, it 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 was uh, you know this hap this is after perhaps two years of Hurricane Maria, and uh, I when Hurricane Maria happened, I I was there before and after. Um, they announced the hurricane while I was there and. Of course, I couldn't leave, you know, uh, my mom and uh, my my brother uh, works for the electric company in Puerto Rico. So he was going to be incredibly busy at the time. So I I stay with my mom in the house where I grew up. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was a very, uh, wow, it was such a traumatic experience. I can hardly talk about it. But I, I, I um, my, my phone, my phone didn't work well. But my, I could take pictures, mm -hmm. and I, I took a lot of pictures of the, the, the landscape, uh, and the sky, because it was like something I never seen before, um, mm -hmm. and the destruction of the landscape was so dramatic. I just, I, I kept those. For a long time, and, and I didn't see any any way that I could show this. I think there, uh, to me, it, it it was going to be something that I I keep to myself till I figure how I can present them in a way that the audience could opt for looking at it or or not, uh, because it is I think uh, creating a spectacle of trauma and disaster is is, um, you know, it's, it's a very hard, uh, almost, and, not, and, and something I don't consider uh, mm -hmm. to make a representation of, of a disaster, but these are actual documentation um, uh, of, the, of the landscape. So it doesn't arrive in such a kind of difficult way. And it, it, it can, through content, I can expand on the, on that part of the project, so yeah. in this, in the, in the, in the one uh, for Museo del Barrio and the exhibition that I'm I'm doing the same week at uh, Morgan Lehman Gallery in New York, uh, I I created um, an update of um, a political contributor who happens to be my brother-in-law. And his name is Andy Sullivan, and he he's a political writer for for Reuters, mm -hmm. and he contributed to Graft back in um, and in 2013, and uh, he's been updating. This is the third update of the of the con of that content that he provided, and I already ma made a PDF that is available, but uh, it it will be available uh, for for the public. Can I just mention? Oh, yes. 
I was going to say, Edra wrote, um, we have a catalog for Estamos Bien, and Edra mm -hmm. wrote a really interesting um, uh, explanation also of the viewfinders mm. about connecting it with the architectural experience of a quiebra sol or a reja. Like mm. if you're actually in a neighborhood, um, you know, they block you. That's the intention. They're meant to block the sun or they're meant to provide protection. So mm. of someone walking down the street, you might get curious about, you know, what's behind the reja. So you might peer through, it's like peering through someone's gate, let's say. So mm -hmm. I think that's a very beautiful connection um, that you were able to achieve through the viewfinders, Edra. And I think it also connects with um, what you were saying about Hurricane Maria. It's like people who are wanting to have, um, you know, you want to look, but you have to reflect on what you might be looking at. Um, you're mm -hmm. really confronted with that experience. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Susana. And also, yeah, one thing that I always mention is, um, you know, the ideas of visibility and invisibility that uh, the, the fences really provide, uh, you know, a, a platform for, for speaking of, of this. Uh, in, it almost, it, sometimes it even feel literal to <laughs> how, mm -hmm. the, how the fences have the, uh, you know, the ability of expressing something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so let's now, let's talk then about um, how you know you how you met. You met here at um, when you visited Screenhouse in Millennium Park in Chicago, and this is a a um, an extension of the ideas of graft, right, Edra, into a sort of actual freestanding architectural structure. Um, That's so, great. Yeah. yeah, so I'd love to hear um, you know, Susanna, your impressions of the work when you met Edra and. Um, you know, what What kind of gave you the idea motivated you to bring Graft to the museum? Uh, well, we visited, let's see, we visited Chicago. It must have been the fall of 2018. Um, and it was actually before this project was completely done, Edra. We were able to take like a behind the scenes, almost like a hard hat tour. Um, it was almost complete. So we were able to get the full expression of Screenhouse, but but we felt very you know lucky that we were some of the first to see it. Um, and we, there's actually wonderful photos of, we were on a patron's trip with us and some of the patrons like peering through it, looking into it. And um, yeah, that was the first time we met in person and then I think we met again at, you had a show here in New York at a gallery, Edra, and we really wanted to bring Graft to El Museo also because, you know, going back to that um, interest in the intersectionality of Latinx, and we were talking about um, how this whole pandemic experience has or has not shaped Latrianal. I think in one respect, your project, Edra, like so many of the artists in the show, it has been addressing a lot of issues that the pandemic and that, um, you know, the murder of George Floyd and so many others, the, all of that was happening before, but now it's very much, um, people are aware of it in a way that we should have been before, but that, you know, as a society, we weren't. And I think that that really speaks to the project of graft where you're recovering those African origins. I think throughout the Americas, especially with architecture, we really tend to look to a European lineage or that's what we acknowledge. And we kind of forego the African influences or the indigenous influences. It's part of our like um, systemic racism. That's a part of our society and part of our cultural institutions. Mm -hmm. So your work just really spoke to this moment in a way, like I said, you were already doing it. Um, so it wasn't a one-to-one -one reaction. It's it's part of your practice and part of what we're hoping to be able to um, show as part of La Triennale. And here we're seeing a schematic for the installation at um, El Museo. Um, so I'm wondering if, Edra, you can kind of talk us through that a little bit and, and then uh, Susanna to talk about the particular space that this work is going to be presented and your thinking about that. Um, it's so it's so compelling how graph sort of shifts depending on the context in which it's presented. So yeah. Yes. Um, sorry. 
<laughs> well, uh, yeah, this is, I may be the first time that anybody's seen this sketch. Um, so the, yeah, this is uh, the, um, the historic windows of the museo. And um, we, uh, you know, the Susana and Rodrigo and Elsa were so generous to me. Like uh, we were, we work uh, on, I worked with them on few iterations of the, we had an initial proposal and then we kept moving till we arrived to this. And I'm, I'm very happy. I, I, I cannot wait to see it. Um, so they, um, because of certain, uh, you know, when you, it's almost like making public art, you have to kind of work with the environment and the structure and such. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually super excited and happy about the, this uh, final arrival. So I get to activate the windows uh, with the cows that are frosted. Um, so they're almost like, like uh, I think they're gonna be quite visible, but they're like uh, almost like the, the shadow of the actual fence, the actual reja. And then the, re the re representation of the reja that I'm presenting is similar to the one that you're showing right now, right mm -hmm. here, which is uh, trying, to, trying to look like a reja itself. And that this is actually the first one, this XO pattern. This is the first one um, integrating the viewfinders that I, that I have done. So, you know, so many years doing the project, but things are, you know, I, I can keep finding fresh things to do to, uh, to continue to, to explore and the relationship uh, uh, to to others, to the audience as well. Um, but so in in the windows we have the decals, and in the uh, this the walls between the windows we will have actual rejas that have viewfinders integrated. And uh, in in the viewfinders you will find some images of the the common houses of Puerto Rico. Um, many many of them from the neighborhood of, of my bringing. Uh, mm -hmm. Other images from uh, sor sources from Puerto Rico, places from Puerto Rico that kind of speak to the, the culture of, of vernacular architecture. And um, also from Hurricane Maria, the aftermath and uh, the landscape specifically. Exciting. Um, Susanna, can you tell us about the significance of this? space for you and, and having this work installed there? Yeah, so um, Edra's work is part of a brand new space that's debuting at El Museo. Um, here's a view of El Museo. We're located on Fifth Avenue on between uh, 103 and 105th Street. Um, and we've been in this building since the, the 80s. And as you mentioned, the windows are something very significant. You can see that they are throughout the entire first floor of the building. And for a long time, El Museo even used a version of the windows as part of its logo. Yes, yeah, so you can see it here for the 25th anniversary show on um, this catalog here. So they're a really significant and particular part of the architecture of our building, which itself has a fascinating history. Um, as the Hexter building, there was a one-time orphanage in it. We have a beautiful um, theater with wall murals of fairy tales from the 19 teens. Um, but again, we're debuting this brand new space that's called Room 110 for the first time expanding our gallery space as part of La Triennale. So we're super excited that Edra is able to make this intervention in this brand new space, which um, you know, because we're kind of retrofitted into this building, you know, we have a particular architecture, but room 110, it really has almost a white cube um, feel to it. But as opposed to our other galleries where we um, sadly from the inside covered the windows so that we could have gallery walls um, in this new room, we were able to leave the full wall um, the full street wall open so that we get natural light pouring through the windows. You're able to appreciate that very, you know, beautiful characteristic of the building. And so, you know, Edra's work intervening on it at this particular moment is it's really special for us. It's really exciting. Um, 
And I'm going to share here a link to, um, and we've got this in the chat as well, to Edra's Instagram, because there are some great in-process photographs of the construction of the installation. And um, they're, they're really amazing. Um, so with our last kind of five minutes and just being mindful of, um, you know, Ed, Edra in particular, well, Edra and Susanna have busy schedules and, and need to go <laughs> back to things. I'm going to invite um, Kelly to come back and join us and see if we have any questions from our audience that we can share with you. Yes, I should say Graft is actually um, the window decals are being installed as we speak. So it's, it's really yeah. exciting. We could talk about this today. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, I love how they are looking. It's, it's great. Yeah. It's coming together. This was fantastic. Edra, thank you for sharing. Thank you both for making the time today. I love this ongoing series of work. <clears throat> and I love all of the nuances of kind of bringing something that's often overlooked, often feels a bit mundane, you know, from into something that's really beautiful and welcoming. Um, I, I am not seeing questions right now from our audience, but I just, you know, I'm interested, Edra, as you think about this work and as you were talking about kind of the, the viewfinders and, and the fact that you use the mirrored reflective material as a source to hold the viewfinders and you found people finding themselves in those spaces, people becoming part of the work and your, your interest in making that connection through the work to the, to the project in Millennial Park where people are actually entering these spaces of these graphs and, and how you see this work evolving in time, kind of what you might dream for this work in the future because it feels like it's the perfect kind of work that bridges all so many, you know, from the African roots of, of these design patterns to, to the people whose homes are protected to the people who are kept out. Thank you for that wonderful question. Um, yeah, one, one thing that I, I hope to accomplish in the future will be a, a publication that really gathers all the different investigation, the source material, the different iterations, the influences, you know, um, is, you know, probably a, a survey of the, this, this project will be amazing. Uh, things that I, um, I think are materializing uh, since um, maybe this, this end of the year and, then, and now is the activation of Screen House at Millennium Park. We had a, the first activation of a performer, performance, dance, and, mm. and music happening. And there's a, a projection of future uh, performances happening there, um, uh, which is something that uh, I, I envision with this, this space. Uh, I mean, Screen House was made for, uh, to have a, a, have a space in, to be filled in either by the public or, or by activation by, by other artists. So that I always think about others when I when I do my work. It's just sort of like the way I, that, that what motivates me. Uh, so that will be a the very big part. I, I hope to, the, I hope to have, to have that uh, kind of survey in in few years, maybe like uh, you know, uh, four years or so. I think it, I like to collaborate with uh, high school teachers from Puerto Rico, and I already started a conversation about creating a curriculum that integrate this, uh, you know, the um, the concept of the rejas and quebrasoles and how uh, we we can study them in um, in elementary and high school. Um, so that that's a part that is actually I've, I've wrote about this a while ago, <laughs> maybe since the I did the show at the Chicago Cultural Center, but I haven't had the chance to materialize this. And I, I just started the conversations uh, in the last visit I did in Puerto Rico. I so lucky I have family, friends, people that 
our educators and writers. I just, I, I get to work with all of them. <laughs> so I, I love you saying as a, as a visual artist, you get to sort of dip your fingers into all kinds of areas from architecture and to education. I want you to keep us abreast of the developing curriculum because I think it sounds fantastic. Thank you, thank you. Edra, I'm glad we had this time. Susanna, you've left me imprinted with this image of the light coming in El Museo through, through these windows, which is going to be astonishing, right? Kind of this white on white with the light coming through. Um, I really appreciate the work you're both doing. I know you both have to run. Edra, this is as close as Donna and I could get to having you with us in a residency. For this I need a residency so bad, you have no idea. I need to discover <laughs> with the world so I can make things. You need a little I time to finish the writing and, you know, and the graft feels like it might have a place at Montavo one day. Oh, I heard that. I, I only wish, yeah. <laughs> I want to. And I can do the writing. <laughs> you, you need to do the writing, it's very yeah. important. So I want to, on behalf of Three Arts, just do a shout out for the work they do to support Chicago artists. And, and what they've done to bring you to us as an LAP Three Arts Fellow. So one day we'll be back open and we'll have you here with us. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Susan. Thank you so, so much. much. Thank for you. And thank, thank you so Sandra. much, Edra. Thank you, thank Susanna. You, this has been a real treat to talk with you today. Thank you so much. Nice. We'll let you both run. We've been an hour and Donna, we can talk about yeah, what's going on. Um, Thanks all. Thank Bye you. All. Thank you, ladies. Bye, thank Take you. Take care. Have a good day. So, um, Kelly, can you tell us what we have coming up next week on Scratch Space? Yes, I can. Um, we're looking forward to March 4th and a conversation we'll have with artists and educators Jennifer Parker and Kim Yasuda as they discuss the importance of the pedagogical experimentation and collaborative learning as we, as well as an ongoing project that empowers interdisciplinary thinking and activates the intersection between institutional knowledge, production and creative practice. Both Jennifer and Kim will examine their shared interest in how we can create and prototype systems of mutual aid to perpetuate a healthy interdependent arts ecosystem that supports social transformation. Looking forward to that. I am too. <laughs> Thank you, Donna, for everything. I wish we were together. I know, me too. <laughs>